Good afternoon and welcome to my daily broadcast, daily inspirational chat about love and relationships um, and other things besides. This is episode number 677 and the topic today is how come you're still single, in quotes. Should you be offended by that? Well, I'm going to give you some ideas about how you can respond and also what you want to take away from that. So before I jump to, into that, let me introduce myself so you know who I am and what I'm about so you know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, in case you haven't seen me before, my name is Barry Selby. Welcome. Um, you probably saw that from the title in the broadcast. Um, I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, 677. Yes. <laughs> I'm not. Yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, let me jump into, the, let me introduce myself formally, and then I get into the topic, and we start having some fun interacting, talking, and discussing this rich topic. Um, Again, my name is Barry Selby. I'm a best-selling author, inspirational speaker, and help women. And I help women create balance in love, life, and business. Um, thank you, Alicia. I appreciate that. No, I, I, I'm glad you love my book, and I will show, show, show put a link in the, my book in the comments for those people interested. And you're very welcome. And I'm glad you like what I'm doing. Um, so I'm a passionate champion of the divine feminine, which feeds my talks which is called Messages for the Masculine, Inspiring Your Feminine Heart. This is episode 677. It also is why I do the work I do with women. I've actually got some things brewing now with a couple of friends. Maybe a summit, we'll see what's coming up, but it's gonna be about feminine leadership because I'm really finding myself driven by that. And after this past weekend at my friend Deborah Kagan's event where I was holding space and shooting pictures for her, I felt the energetic of that, what that feels like. So I'm really into that place as well. However, today's topic, and this is episode 677, as I mentioned, is, how come you're still single? Should you be offended? And what to do about it? Or how to respond? So first of all, this is inspired, of course, by something else I saw. A friend of mine posted this morning about that when some people gave her feedback about how come she's still single. And there was a lot of interesting dialogue in the posts and the comments underneath that broadcast. But I spoke up from my own perspective. And this is what I experienced was what's been happening. So first of all, if you're single and you're over the age of 25, <laughs> maybe 30, You've probably heard from somebody, maybe it's parents, maybe it's in-laws, ex, maybe it's sorry, not in-laws, um, relatives, because if you haven't been married, you wouldn't have any in-laws. Or just, just people you know, looking at going, how come you're not married? Like somehow being married is the right place to be. Or how come you're still single? Which is somehow judged as being wrong or not less than, not as good as, which is what the challenge is with this, is it's tempting to buy into the victim part of this which I'm encouraging you not to do. So first of all, no victimization in this place. What I'm also aware of is that as we are now, as the culture seems to be more, um, I won't say evolving, but changing, where a lot of people who are upwards of 25, in fact, upwards of maybe 35 or 45, who are single because either they never got married or quite as often the case, they've been divorced. So they're single at the moment because they're not in relationship. There's a lot more people out there who are single than we than you, than used to be the case. I mean, going and I'm, I don't have data to back this up, but my strong suspicion is going back to the 40s and 50s, there was a lot less divorce going on. So people were married for life. So there was indeed this sense that most people got married in in their adult life and were very rarely single beyond the age of 25, 30. Nowadays things have changed a lot culturally, and I know for a lot of. Um, I won't say millennials necessarily, but for a lot of the a younger younger demographic, marriage is no longer a, a, such a key requirement as it used to be for the old days. So first of all, that's shifting the culture, but that belief structure is still out there about people saying, how come you're not married? You should be in relationship. Something wrong with you or something. And that's the judgment that's coming through. Here's some things I want to say about that. And having been single for, most, for my whole life, I mean, I've been in a relationship, but I haven't been married before, but having been single, I've had this feedback quite a bit, so I can speak from experience. So I'm gonna throw some ideas and some, th not throw, I'm gonna offer some suggestions, some ideas and some encouragement for you to give you some thoughts about what you may consider for yourself. One of which I'm gonna start off with, which is my own personal, um, actually, I'm gonna get two of those, but one of them is my own personal declaration because I now learned this the hard way and then learned the lesson the right way um, 12, 12 years ago. I didn't realize, and I'm grateful for this, that I, I can say this another way. <laughs> I'm grateful I didn't get married before this because I didn't realize how messed up I was in terms of my relationship paradigm. Let's be honest about this. I learned 
starting about 12 years ago, the, par the paradigm of the masculine feminine polarity in particular, how to be a masculine man and how I didn't tap into that before that point. My partnership and relationship wasn't the best it could have been before that point. And I know if I'd been married, I would have ruined my partner's, really, my partner's experience because I wouldn't have stood up and been a fully masculine partner in that relationship. That also opened up for me a space to understand that being a masculine man meant something more than just being a man in a relationship. It meant being a man who has purpose. One of my biggest lessons I've learned along the way is to be fully in my masculine has to be about living my purpose. And that has to come before relationship, as one of my teachers puts it, but I get now viscerally, viscerally, how true that is. That to be in a relationship is so tempting to put all my focus in that. So my partner carries the weight of my purpose, and as I put it to a friend of mine this past weekend, it also puts in top of that the weight of spirituality, because I believe before even our masculine purpose, we as men need to find our connection to source, to spirit, to, to God, whatever that is. And when we have that relationship in place, and we have a, a purpose in place, then we can have a healthy romantic relationship with a woman because we don't put all that pressure on her to fulfill the things that she's not supposed to fulfill. So that's one thing from the masculine point of view. The things I, talk, I talked about earlier, <clears throat> excuse me, that cough, that cough is almost gone now, thankfully, thankfully. If you watched my broadcast last week, I was struggling through a phase of coughing quite a bit. So I'm pretty much over that now, thankfully. So. One of the things it talks about was about how a lot of people who are now in their 40s, sometimes in their 50s, have been married before, who are divorced now. And for some of them, being married again is not high on a priority list. They may still be carrying wounds from that past relationship. And if you're someone who was married into a relationship with a partner who was, was abusive or hurtful or an addict or neglected you, whatever that was, and you got divorced, jumping back into a relationship again may not be your highest priority. So when someone says to you, "Why, you know, how come you're still single?" There's a very good reason for that. You don't want to get hurt again, which I totally understand. I'm going to speak to that, Martin. I'll speak to that in a moment about what you can do about that. But the reality in relationship for me is that when somebody says to you, "You know, how come you're not in a relationship, or how come you're not married?" There are a lot of good reasons why not. Since the divorce rate is 50% first marriage and 70% second marriage, based on some statistics that are out there. I would say choose marriage from a very, like choose marriage intentionally from a high quality place, and I'll talk about that as well, because there's this rule that, oh, just get married, you'll be fine, which is total bullshit. A relationship shouldn't just be predicated on the fact that you're with somebody. <laughs> it's way too simplistic. For me, it's clear that relationship, and if you watch my work, you watch my videos, all 676 before this, I'm very passionate about authentic, quality, integrity, high, high, highly healthy relationships. If you haven't had one of those, you might not want to be in one because the experience you've had hasn't been, hasn't been positive, which I totally understand. And so when somebody berates you with that statement of like, you know, what's wrong with you? Why don't you have a relationship? You can very clearly own the space of facts like you don't want to get hurt again. You don't want to get abused again. You don't want to get wounded again. You don't want to settle for less than you deserve. Absolutely, fundamentally true. The person who's saying that about you might be in a place where they don't understand that because maybe they felt, maybe they were lucky the first time. Or maybe they're so numb they don't experience the pain in a relationship. Or maybe they just want to have you, want to have you feel the same pain they're feeling. Even, I'm just, I'm giving you a range of possible reasons behind their declaration, or their statement rather. Actually, it's a question, how come you're not married? That's a question, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> I just reframe my head what I was saying. So, giving you that, arena to look at there's definitely an array of choices why you wouldn't be in a relationship or married at a certain point in life not necessarily the whole of life but a certain point in life so at the age of 45 or 50 or even 35 or 60 in that range there are a lot of choices about being out of a relationship and maybe you've been dating or been in a long-term relationship you ended it wasn't even marriage but it ended and you haven't found a place yet where you feel whole to start again with a new relationship I did talk about this a few days ago about um, how some people will never leave a relationship. They'll be in a relationship with somebody, they'll break up and be the next one the next day almost because they're so afraid of being single. So if you are actually single, having spent time out of a relationship, you may in fact be doing a lot more of the inner work, fingers crossed, to become more self-loving, self-supportive and self-appreciative 
So when you choose relationship again, you choose from a much higher place you did in the past. That, by the way, is a big clue. It's tempting to think you can change your relationship experience just by going again and get another one. But we tend, as being creatures of habit and being human, to find ourselves repeating the same patterns again and again and again. So we'll choose relationships that mirror the ones we had before unless we change our own internal circuitry. And that's a big lesson for a lot of people is they don't necessarily get that the first time or the second time or the third time. They'll keep repeating the relationship pattern again and again and again with different people because they haven't changed who they are in that experience. So being single is a very good time, I would say, to do the inner work, to actually change your own wiring so you don't choose that sort of relationship again. So being single is not only a healthy choice, it's a great place to do some work so you can transform your experience. So when you choose a relationship again, you're playing at a much higher level than you were before. That is a big shift. Now, those people, well, sorry, let me, let, me do, let me just take a sidebar for a second. One of your friends, somebody you know, goes, says to you, why aren't you, you know, why, how come you're not in a relationship? They may be saying it from the highest point possible, just to be clear about this. They might be thinking you're so amazing. Why hasn't somebody scooped you up already? Why haven't you fallen in love with somebody amazing yet? This is a perception issue, <laughs> to be truthful, because what they're looking through the lens of is their perception of you. Your perception of yourself may or may not match what they think. So their response can be off, off target for you because you don't feel resonant with what they're saying. Maybe you don't necessarily feel as amazing as they think you are or as they say you are. Maybe you don't feel you've met anybody amazing enough to match who you really have become because you know better now. There's a lot of variables in this. And I want to break down a couple of the pieces, not everything because there's a lot to this conversation. A couple of things that give you some direction, some clarity and some next steps. Because I care. <laughs> and because this is my work and so I can offer some free advice. First, first, first of all, in the paradigm of being single, it's a, as I said before, it's a great time to do some work. A lot of that work can be, one, to get to know who you really are. I'm going to go one and a one. I'll come back to that. Okay. Sorry. A. <laughs> Let me do an A and a B. It'd be easier. A, get to know who you really are. And B, get to learn how to be a better person, to focus on yourself, do the inner work, whether it's going exercising and, and eating well or eating right. Maybe it's doing a spiritual practice to give you a more centered, calm place to be. Maybe it's going to be working with a coach or a therapist to work out the kinks in your past behavioral stuff that was in the way. Maybe it's going to some seminars to change your thinking and your modalities. Maybe it's finding a new career. All of these things can be pretty good, can be pretty effective when you're single. Now, some of those are working in a relationship too, but when you're single, why not focus on those as well? There's such a richness of available tools and teachings and experiences you can explore as a single person that are easier to do than when you're in a relationship. So why not take advantage of that? That was one. Two, being single is also a good time to reflect upon your dating history or your relationship history or your marriage history, depending on the degrees of which you were invested in relationship. Because what you went through before will show you, when you look clearly, directly, um, so we'll show you clearly what did or didn't work. Again, because being single, one of the freedoms of being single is when you look back at past relationships, you're looking through a much cleaner lens. Because you're in relationships, sometimes it's harder to see what's working, what's not working, because you've got the filter of the relationship in the way, blocking you from seeing what's really going on. And being single also gives you the chance to look back and ideally to step back far enough to see several, if not all your relationships in the lens of clarity. So you can really see where the threads and the common patterns were, which can be very um, enlightening, distressing and effective to change the way you date in the future. All of the above can fit in there. So a couple of things I want to give you as suggestions is one, take advantage of being single, meaning to focus on yourself, to do the inner work, to reflect on yourself, and yes, to seek counsel, guidance, support from some things, somebody, some books, workshops, whatever it is, to give you tools to help you become more effective at being a healthy person individually, so then you can choose a healthy relationship that complements that in an effective way. 
one of the things I recommend, as I've said many times before, and I'm going to put, I'm going to put links in the comments for you so you can check the stuff out. First one is my book, which um, was mentioned earlier. Thank you for that, uh, Alicia. I'll put the link in the comments for my book, 50 Ways to Love Your Lover, which is, in fact, not just for couples, but it's for singles too, because it's the 50 Principles for Healthy Relationships. So if you're single or in a relationship, the book will help you. That'll be in the comments. Secondly, which I think is one of the biggest things that we don't do, whether we're single or in a relationship, is really authentically love ourselves. One of the, one of the traps we fall into is we think that we will only be loved or loving when we're in relationship. So when you're single, one of the best things, not one of the best things, one of the, one of the benefits of being single is you won't have somebody else to worry about loving you. That's one of the best things. It is because when you're not around other people to love you, you can actually start discovering the love that's inside yourself. And this is not a selfish act. It's a very self-full act. I want to use the yeah, it's a word. And so by having that focus of loving yourself, you one, become less dependent upon somebody else to love you. And two, you learn to fill yourself up so that the quality of love that you have for yourself means you won't settle for less than that when you go out dating. This is going to change your whole paradigm for love and relationships, I can tell you. And I have a self-love practice. It's a, it's a guided meditation. Has has two audio tracks and a written guide that gives you all the details of how to do it. I'll put a link for that in the comments as well. The reality is that being single is a healthy choice when you choose to do it in a healthy way. For some people, being single is a time to feel down in the dumps and feel like they've lost out and there's no hope for them at all. It's not true, but it's a choice people make because for some people, the wiring inside states that they can only be successful in relationship, or I should say not successful. They only have value when they're in relationship, which is so not true. A healthy relationship is a wonderful place to be. But let me be clear, many relationships that are out in the world, probably many relationships you know, are far from healthy. So being single and taking care of yourself and loving yourself and doing positive things for yourself is much healthier than being in a toxic relationship. So being single is a good thing in this, in this scenario. When you're ready to look for love in the right places and learn to, lo learn to love yourself first, I'll also put a link in the comments for, for a link to, um, to book a discovery session with me because if you really are conscious about this and you want to do some work about it, I can help you. But again, as, as I said, there are many things out in the world you can do to help yourself be a better person as an individual. They help you learn to be more self-caring, self-supportive, whether it's diet, health, spiritual practice, interactive practices, skills with other people, sports, all these different things you can do that will change your paradigms, be make you a better person, excuse me, not make you a better person, that will actually help you become a better person. That's pretty more accurate. So you can be a better partner in the future. What I offer is my own services, but there's many things out there, so I'm not saying it's the only thing to do, although I'm being selfish and being... Um, demonstrative because this is my video so I can talk about my stuff quite happily. I do have online programs and other things too but I want to make sure you get this point is that being being single is no, no by no means a bad thing. Being single especially by choice is a healthy and more successful way to be. Being in a negative relationship, being in a toxic relationship, being in a demeaning relationship is never as good as being single. So Relationship versus being in a relationship versus being single, you can't compare them because they don't relate that way. But if you're single and you want to be a better person to be in a relationship, do the work now whilst you are single and fully embrace, embody, and express your wholeness in your singlehood. It'll make you more attractive for your better relationship too. Oh, that's one of the secrets. When you do this work, you become more attractive as well. <laughs> I think I made my point. Um, this is a reminder that that old paradigm about relationship is better than being single doesn't hold water, at least not in my book. And even though I'm a passionate person about helping you get into relationships, I'm also passionate about you being a healthy single person too. I think I made my point. I'll put some links in the comments to help you out. And I do invite your questions and thoughts in the comments below as well, because this is a open-ended topic. There's more room in here for talking about this. Um, this is my Facebook Live I do every day at 5 p.m. Pacific time on my personal page, and I'll give you the links for the replays and also for my YouTube channel so you can watch some other places too. And this is, a, <clears throat> this is an ongoing series. This is, say, this episode 677. There's a plenty out there before this, so the replays will be useful to you. So first of all, my personal page when you want to join me live at 5 p.m. Pacific time is facebook.com forward slash Barry Selby. 
The replays go onto my business page, which is barryselby.author, and also onto my YouTube channel. And my YouTube channel is Barry, sorry, yes. My YouTube channel is Barry Selby, so it's all my social media, Twitter and everything else. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And on there is a playlist called Messages from the Masculine. So you can look on there and discover all of my broadcasts. You can check out all of them in any sequence you want. I would say you can watch them on my business page as well. But frankly, on YouTube, it's easy to search for titles. And most of the titles are pretty explanatory. So with that, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, thoughts about this topic, please put them below. If you want to ask anything personal about this, feel free to ask. If you want to send me a message over social media, you can do that. And again, I'll put some links in the comments where you can find out more about my work. So with that, I thank you for watching. I hope this is going to give you some insights and some uh, inspiration and maybe a nudge in the right direction. And with that, I look forward to speaking to you tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. Pacific time, on my personal page. I'll see you there again. Take care.